I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the editor in chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Open Silicon with Shafi El Tuki, and we're going to talk today about what's going on in two and a half D. So, Shafi, what what are you seeing in terms of the numbers? Where, why do people want to move to two and a half D? Um, two and a half D is seems to be like a very natural way to go to. Um, especially with the cost of the mask and the cost of uh, licensing the IP going down to the 20 nanometer and 16 nanometer um, the cost is just staggering and uh, not too many people really can afford going to that kind of technology so to have the open up uh, the opportunity for a lot of people to get back into the game and participate in getting a cost effective solution to uh, to the customer we don't see many real numbers though what, what are we actually looking at here uh, one of the big benefits that you can see immediately for 2.5D, especially if you have a, a large die on a, on a node or a process node that is really uh, a new node, that the defect density uh, for this kind of die ended up actually giving you a very, very low yield. Um, once you be able to break down the die into smaller dies, that being two dies or four dies, uh, just because of the magic of the exponential uh, yield function, you will end with a much better yield, in some cases double the yield number. And uh, the goal is really uh, as a benefit, immediate benefit of the 2.5D is to uh, take advantage of that low yield, uh, high yield number that we're getting to compensate for the extra cost associated with building the 2.5D. That's definitely one advantage of going to 2.5D. Uh, the, other, the other big advantage of 2.5D, it allows you to uh, mix different process nodes. Uh, sometimes you need to go to, the two and a, to, to, let's say, 28 nanometer, just only because you need the application processor to run at a very high speed. The rest of the chip does not need to be there. 2.5D allows you to decouple the functions of the chip uh, you know, with different, different kind of technology. And of course, you're going to get a benefit of uh, the cost of the mask, and you get a benefit of uh, the cost of the wafers and so on uh, from that point of view. Uh, a, a good example if you look at if you look at the uh, uh, if you look at the die size versus yield uh, as as you as as in, in many many cases uh, you will see the die size versus yield actually is an exponential function. So if you happen to be at, at, a, at a large die size, you get a very low yield. As in, for example, in a 28 nanometer, if you have a, a, a three, 300 millimeter square die, you will be lucky if you get 40% yield, uh, even at, a, at a mature process. Uh, imagine that you can take that 300 millimeter square die and you break it down to two, uh, all of a sudden your yield has gone up from 40% all the way to 70%. If you go even further and you break it down to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, four dies, your yield will go up from 70% all the way to 80%. So you get an immediate advantage just by breaking down the die into smaller dies from uh, the fact that the yield is an exponential function of the area uh, of, of the die. And the goal in, of the 2.5D to take advantage of that improvement in the yield to uh, more than compensate for the cost of uh, the interposer. So uh, imagine, imagine now you have, you, have, you have one SOC die that has all the function you want, and it is done in a process node, say, 28 nanometer. And the cost of this die, uh, and the cost of the IP, and the mask, and so on, uh, will be very, very high because you are licensing the IP for every chip that you are building. Um, imagine now you can you can partition the SOC into three dies. These three dies, based on our experience of building over 200 SOC, we almost see that the SOC consists mainly of three components. One component is an application processor that could be a dual core A9 or quad core A9. Um, with some kind of an interface to um, a DDR or an AND and some general purpose I.O. The other component of it will be a high-speed series, depending on your application. That could be a PCI Express or it could be a SATA. 
And the third component is really the secret sauce of the customer. That could be an algorithm or an encryption or something unique about the customer where they add value uh, into the chip. If you, if you do the math and break this down to three pieces, uh, you will get an immediate benefit of a yield, which we talked about before. You will get also the benefit that some of these function does not have to be in the state-of-the-art uh, process. So some of these function will be fine if you do it in the 65 nanometer. So you get a big advantage already uh, of the cost. Uh, so our ultimate goal is really to build a library of known good dyes, which has been verified already, uh, has been validated in the silicon, has been tested, and ready to go. When the customer come to us and they ask for a bigger system, we already have the pieces. It's like a Lego blocks. You can take all these Lego blocks and build your own um, system out, out of it. This will give you an immediate advantage as far as the cost of the IP, the cost of the mask, and more importantly is the time to market. Because if we gonna only build a new die that has the encryption or the algorithm that the customer wants, this will mainly actually speed up quite a bit the physical design and uh, the layout of, of that particular part. So from the standpoint of total cost of ownership and total cost of developing of the uh, die, have any studies been done in terms of when you really look at the NRE, you look at the time to market, the amount of uh, verification that has to be done, uh, the testing of the chips, is there a, a comparison that's ever been done like that? Um, there is probably we can break this down to two components. One is the NRE component and one is the cost of the unit. Um, as far as the NRE component, uh, we believe by doing this, you will end up probably reducing the cost of of the IP in general uh, by almost 50% based on the analysis that we have done. Um, we also uh, believe that the time to market you could actually shrink it easily by about six months because you have a big part of your chip is already has been validated. Uh, so the overall NRE and the time to market will have a big improvement. Uh, and then NRE, our goal is really to reduce the NRE by almost 50% and from the time to market to shrink that time to market uh, to down to about six months. Uh, from the cost of the unit, which is a long-term cost of the unit itself, uh, we believe currently, uh, a lot of people talk about the interposal cost and it's too expensive and, and so on. Uh, yes, it's too expensive now because mainly there is not too much volume uh, going on. At the same time, uh, people uh, or the foundry need to invest with the equipment to do uh, the, the TSV and some, some other technology that did not exist, exist before. But eventually, when you have the volume in there and you have a lot of people coming into it, the cost of the interposer will go down to what is the industry is trying to get to, which is about one penny per millimeter square. Once we get to that number, I think it will open up a lot of application and a lot of a lot of stuff that can be done with a two and a half D. I believe currently we are about probably three penny per millimeter square. But going to one penny per millimeter square will get will get there with the volume uh, and we'll get there also with a lot of people coming into into the picture once the two and a half D start taking off. In general as as you know uh, when the when uh, when when we build now chips now actually we put them in a in a PCB port and we ended up actually having a very um, uh, large uh, driver just to drive the traces of the BCP board because these traces in the BCP board uh, could be as wide as uh, you know 50 micron or even more. Um, our experience with the two and a half D uh, essentially that when you drive from one die to the other. Uh, your distance is going to be probably around one millimeter all the way to maybe four millimeter. And the, 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 the capacitance is only going to be one buff compared to, uh, you know, much larger capacitance in the PCB board. Our experience showed actually that we could have a very, very small driver uh, which reduced dramatically the power from that point of view. And not only that, but also our experience showed that you really do not have to have a large driver, big 
issue with the driver that we have now, it has to sustain the ECD damage that normally the industry have. In the 2.5D, since really no human being really touching these micro pumps, you may not need that much big driver. And our experience showed that we can actually run a trace of probably three millimeter with a very small driver at one gigahertz very easily in a 28 nanometer uh, technology. So what are, we, what are we looking at here? What we're looking at here is essentially that uh, traditionally you build a chip, that being an SOC, on a, and you want to connect it to another chip on a PCB port, you have to do uh, the interconnect between these two, usually running around 200 to probably 100 micron wide, and it also run for maybe a few inches and so on, just the nature of the PCB itself. So in order to do that, you will end up actually having a much bigger driver to uh, be able to uh, transfer uh, the data from one place to the other at that kind of high capacitance in there. Uh, it also requires you to make your driver very, very large because people are worried about the ACD and the damage that could happen during the handling of the chip. On the other hand, if you do that on the interposer, now you have a, a known good die and you are running a distance maybe 3 millimeter or 4 millimeter, uh, but also more important is, uh, um, is uh, the traces that you are running is only one micron trace which the capacitance is very, very small, is probably around one buff. So in order to drive the one buff, your driver has to be very, very, can be actually very, very small, and you don't have to worry about the ACD damage because actually nobody touches uh, these micro pumps at that level because it's all done uh, in the assembly from that point of view. So we see a big advantage just by moving it from the PCB to the interposer by having an good time. Shafi al Tuki, thank you very much for a great explanation of what's going on at 2.5D. It's my pleasure, and uh, thank you for, 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 for coming here. And it's, uh, I, I hope in the future we can actually talk a little bit more about the 2.5D because I do believe uh, this is a technology of the future, and the industry has to uh, take advantage of it as soon as possible.